Hello and welcome everybody to the glitchy or Phoenix and glitchy talk shit show Ignore my shitty bangs. They actually aren't crooked. I just have a hat on and everything's all kinds of fucked up Hi guys, so today's topic is Very near and dear to our hearts It's okay to have different interests than you know your best friend or your significant other yeah. Um. Now before we go too far into this if you have none of the same interests as your significant other, there might That's be a problem there. slightly problematic. Um, but, you know, it's okay to have differing Motherfucker, hobbies. Motherfucker, telling you, your shit keeps changing. Hmm? Your webcam, like, every time, or maybe OBS is doing it, I don't know. Sorry for OBS that interruption. I think OBS is doing it, because it's not moving on my end. Yeah, I just um, had to, like, I literally just had to center your video again by editing the frame. But yeah, you know... Fuck you, OBS! It's, it's, it's okay to not have the same interests as your best friend, or as your significant other. As long as some of make them... it interesting, but at least have, like, a few things that you can talk about to each other, otherwise... I think yeah. you're in the wrong relationship, because sex ain't enough. And, and you know, some things maybe that you can do together, mm -hmm. you know? It, Video games are a great bridging the gap thing. Maybe Not you don't always, always. Well, maybe you don't always play the same games, or you don't play it the same way. But there are certain. And usually, there are things <laughs> that you can bond over that yeah. are, you know, good. I and, will say, don't f if you have a competitive streak that's a mile long, and you are a sore loser. Do not fucking play Mario Kart with your significant other. Yeah. I fucking went ballistic on Boneyards at one point early on in our relationship because I I didn't like video games to start out and B, I fucking hated losing. And he kept hitting me with that goddamn blue shell. I love Mario Kart though. So much fun. Well, also I'm very terrible at using controllers. So, PC gamer for life. That's one of those things it takes practice though. To be honest, we didn't I practice mean, or anything. We just basically jumped right in, and we're like, "Let's do this!" You and know, we fought. I ideally, if you've never really used controllers all that much, which some people have always used PC controls, some mm -hmm. people have always used controllers. I myself started out on controllers and then moved to PC, and I still do both. And certain things control better on PC, some control better on a controller, um, oh. but really it all boils down to if you haven't used either a keyboard and mouse uh, control or a controller before, take some time and practice first. Exactly. Get a feel, get a feel for how the movement works, get a feel for how the controls react to you, because it's different. Mm -hmm. That. That, that's like gaming corner material right there, lol. But, back to our main topic. It's, like we said, it's fine, okay? It's it's good! You don't have to be that cookie cutter couple that you see sometimes paraded around in ads and, you know, other media. HA HA! I got the son of a bitch! Sorry, a gnat literally, like a fly got in the house through the fucking, like, screen door. And it was literally this tiny little baby gnat thing, and I literally it was fucking fluttering towards my face, and I literally just caught it ninja style. Yeah, yeah. Also, in case you're wondering, we're still eating, um, or, well, we haven't really been eating. We've been doing things in between these videos that we're making right this second, but, you know, yo, snack time. Yeah, snack time. Um. I had dinner at, like, 9 o'clock. Wait, when did I wake up? You woke up at like 8. Yeah, so I had dinner at 9 o'clock. It's now 5 a.m. I'm a little hungry. Okay. Examples so, of differences that it's okay to have. Well, and here, here's a thought. Hmm. Before we get into that. Hmm. this The saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, no. is not bullshit. It isn't. What? Because... For me personally, there are periods of time where I just need my space. Oh, yeah. Where I just need some me time away, you know, 
And because I'm single, I get a lot of that, which I would prefer <laughs> somebody to cuddle with and, you know, that kind of stuff. But even if I was in a relationship, I would still need that time for me to decompress and just kind of be for a while, you know? Yeah. So in and that sense... Really have to be waiting or expecting or whatever for your significant other. Because so no matter what, no matter how, you know, comfortable you feel around your significant other or your friends or whatever, there's always little things that that are just for you to think and you to feel and you to process. And that alone time is important. I cannot stress this enough. Yes, there's periods of time where at the beginning of relationships you're up in each other's asses like 24-7. But when it starts to taper off, don't immediately think, oh shit, they don't love me anymore or they don't like me anymore. Because if you notice and you pay attention to yourself, you do have times where you want to be alone as well. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you establish that you're separate people. Exactly. E even though you're together. Because if Just you because lose... you start dating, I mean, don't fucking become a single celled organism if you lose your sense of self then things tend to get unhealthy really fast real damn fast and you know um and if you're in a relationship where your significant other is pushing you to constantly change or be something you're not or isolate more, yourself or isolate yourself from others around you that's a warning sign yeah but on the other hand you know me personally I'm an affectionate, touchy-feely person. It so, depends on the day for me. So honestly, the amount of time that I need to myself, it's there. Mm -hmm. But it's not as much as what most people would think. You know, if I have a couple hours in the day where I can just be, then I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest of the day, I, I can interact with other people, you know, and be a functioning, you know, adult. One reason... Um, we make so many videos each time we do make the videos, which is pretty much every night. It's so that when those times hit me, because sometimes they hit me extremely severely, mm -hmm. and I need to just disappear from the whole fucking world, we've got extra videos to still put out. Yeah, and there are days where I won't hear from Glitchy for, you know, hours and hours, sometimes even days on end, and I'll just text her and say, hey, when you're Ready to come back to society, I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and it's it's important that you not make it about you, because it's not. Yeah, if you have a friend or a spouse that needs their their face, mm -hmm. it's not about you. It's about them needing some time away. And you just you need just to make in. you just need to make sure that they know that, that you're you there for when and that you care for whenever they're ready to integrate back into the swing of things mm -hmm. you know that's um, extremely important don't overwhelm them or you know constantly send them messages just or, no. depending on the length of time that they're away you know just hermiting or whatever yeah just one or two messages over a lengthy time like if it's a week or two maybe three messages to just let, remind the person that you're still there I wouldn't go that far I tend to message you at least once a day <laughs> if I don't hear you for like days on end, oh, and yeah, it's that's true. and it's usually just randomness that comes to mind. Yeah, like we it, have this thing where the two of us, like, if we haven't talked to each other for a while, or if one of us seems like they're just kind of not really there, one of us will message each other and just kind of be like, "Moose." Yeah. It ties to this whole fucking like wackadoodle, like silly shit that happened a while back. It's kind of a running joke thing <laughs> that just sort of spiraled. And, um, but it's it's turned into our way of saying, hey, I'm still around mm -hmm. in case, you know. Um, and for me, that stems from... I've had people just kind of disappear from my life. I have too. Without it a word. It stresses me. And so I am very careful about... Well, for one thing, I need that assurance that somebody's still there. Right, exactly. And, and for another I'm thing... Terrible at I, giving that assurance. And I am careful about giving that assurance. Mm. That way they don't think that I'm upset with them 
or is right. that I've, I'm just saying, fuck you, I'm off. You know? Literally, the only person I really do that for is Phoenix. I just generally cut off the entire rest of the world when I fucking go into the state. I'm terrible about communicating when I need to have alone time because it ends up building up to a point where if I don't fucking get away from everything, I'm gonna crack. Which, I thought it was funny, because at first, I was actually, you know, surprised that you did that. Because I had been hearing from, like, everybody else, including Boneyards, that, like, you don't do that for anybody. I and don't. now it's, it's just kind of been, we've kind of gotten into this rhythm where if I'm just not feeling myself on a particular day, then... Like, everybody else, I still panic that they're not talking to me because I did something wrong. With, and to a degree, I still do it with you occasionally, you know that. But it was a yeah. lot worse when we first became friends. Because I remember mm -hmm. distinctly, you asked me, what do you do? What did you do before you met me? And I'm like, not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know. And that's the sad thing, kinda, you know. I, I kind of agree. I don't really <laughs> have friends. I have I have friends. I have people. Well, I have people on the internet that I have fr that I am friends with. But. Yeah. Those generally taper off into, oh my god, if I talk to this person one more time, I'm gonna be a bitch. Well, and I'm terrible about it. Because it's not necessarily their fault. It's just, my brain can only handle so much one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. So, I start to freak out and I start to shift blame on them. And then I realize, oh shit, I really shouldn't do that. That's not good. And to my friends and to the people in, you know... If I haven't directly talked shit to you, or blocked you, I'm probably still okay with you. <laughs> and and honestly, for me, I've discovered something rather interesting. What? Online relationships, not like like relationship relationships, friendships, but like friendships, tend for me to have a shelf life. Yeah. In most cases, mm. you, glitchy. The DM that I do Legend of Dragons with, Sammy and Ivy are kind of the only ones that haven't had a shelf life. It's really odd. One person um, we know has reached her shelf life with me. Always angry. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's a whole nother video. That, that's um, a whole nother video where we really won't talk about said person's name. We won't mention their name. But just know. But I, oh. I will, I will admit that like, I've noticed that I have sort of a life cycle for internet friendships mm -hmm. where I interact with somebody and it's like really intense. Like, holy crap! I I mesh with yes. this person. Yes, you it's and me. That amazing. we did that immediately. And but normally with with anybody other than Glitchy and the DM and a couple other people. It tapers off after a while. Even and then, even he and my boyfriend don't really talk that much anymore. No. Which, I well, mean, I don't mind it. I mean, it's not a big thing, and Boneyards doesn't mind it. Boneyards is also a hermit. He doesn't talk to a lot of people. Well, and there's a lot we don't see eye to eye on either. That's <laughs> so, true. That, there is there is that. Um, but I've noticed that, like, eventually, that intense, like, holy crap, we get each other, dies to off. fade out, yeah. But then... One of two things happens. In a rare case, it dies down, but then there's this comfortable rhythm that fits. Like me! Or... I'm doing a stupid-ass pose, by the way. <laughs> the, the other instance is... That other person just sort of fades off. Yeah. In the back. See, I have three ways of this, this split happening. Yeah, one, there's actually one which is more. extremely fucking rare, extremely fucking rare, is what... Phoenix described as becoming a comfortably rhythmic friendship. The second one is, again, what he said, which is, they just kind of fade out of my life. And then the third is, oh my fucking god, if I deal with this person one more time, holy fucking shitballs, I'm going to eat their fucking face off. If I don't block them on every single fucking social media device that they can contact me on. Now, I'm also going to mention... <laughs> I'm going to mention somebody from my past here. I'm not going to say names, but she fell into a fourth category. Mm. She, her and I were a lot like you and I, Glitchy. Mm -hmm. We hit it off pretty quick. Mm -hmm. We had a lot in common. You and for about a year, name off a fucking video though. 
Um, for about a year, we kind of fell into this really, you know, rhythmic rhythm. Mm -hmm. She had bipolar disorder, which is actually kind of interesting because there's some parallels between you and her. Um, Usually it's there kinda, is. It's kind of interesting. Um, but with her, after about a year, she started to pull away. And instead of My eyebrows slowly, just vanished under my hat, by the way. <laughs> instead of instead of slowly fading into the background, she got pissed at me for something I hadn't even done. She like completely and totally made up some fucking reason to hate me. What? And then she was gone. Uh, it was the weirdest thing. I did that sort of thing when I was a fucking kid. And what's weird is Before I don't even I was know. Diagnosed as bipolar. And what's weird is I still don't even know what I did. <laughs> like you I just still did had, something. I yeah, I still don't even know what I did or what she thinks I did. To this day, and like that's the weird, the, the the weird thing about it. The weird thing about it is she added me on Facebook. What? A couple of months, about a month or two ago. But I she'll okay. invite she'll invite me to pages and. She will comment on things that I say. Why did you or, fucking or, add her? Or post. I don't know why. I, you I, are terrible. <laughs> but what happened, what's weird is, and I recently deleted her actually. Oh good. Because, because when, when she would comment on something that I would post, mm -hmm. when I would comment in response to her comment. She wouldn't reply. She wouldn't respond. I fucking hate that shit. It was weird. I'm like, you commented to me. You opened like, the fucking conversation! What the fuck, bitch? Yeah, I'm like... And I'm sorry, I'm making a snap judgment on this chick because she sounds like a bitch. She is. And there's a whole, like, long set of stories and shit that I can get into. Um, Which that'll probably be off video, honestly, guys. <sighs> yeah, because cause I'm not gonna throw shade on other people in, in large quantities. Well, other people that are, like, not really famous. We'll throw shade yeah. on famous people to the cast come home. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll fucking, fucking Kim Kardashian. Which reminds me, we have to make that Shane Dawson video still. Oh god, fucking <laughs> <laughs> In case you're wondering, I'm not a fan. Um, look forward to that video. Cause, um, we gonna expose some shit. But yeah, you know, to be uh, entirely honest, it's okay to have different interests. And it's okay to slowly realize that the person that you become friends with doesn't mesh with you anymore. Yeah. But don't make up a reason. Yeah, don't make up some huge fucking dramatic lie or story or anything like that. Just be a fucking adult. And, it, and honestly, though, what the hell does that term even mean? Because I, my, my parents, Jesus fuck, they've been talking about getting a divorce for like three years now and that shit hasn't happened. And you know, honestly, I'm very bad about not practicing what I preach. That's true. But, but. <laughs> I listen. know some points where that is very fucking true. And, but I'm going to make this this point. Uh, and I, uh, I do it. I admit I do it. But. I'm bad about it too, to a degree. And I used to be terrible about it. But if I suddenly just completely remove you from all forms of contact and there's one I happen to forget about don't fucking contact me well and, and here's the thing <laughs> I'm terrible I, I, it bothers me personally when people do that to me but the thing because, is and I, it because, bothers me too which is a double standard I know but yeah. at the same time if I do that the reason I'm doing it is because there has become a hostile environment revolving around me and my feelings towards said person, and if I fucking contact them and try to be an adult, they're gonna say one fucking thing to piss me off, because they always, no matter who it is, if I've done that to them, they always say one fucking thing to piss me off. And then, and here, brrr, machine gun typing, and, and I'm laying it all the fuck out there. And here's my thoughts about it. Okay. The reason that it bothers me, and it's a double standard, I know it is. Right. Um, 
it's because personally I would much rather somebody come to me and say whatever the problem it is they have with me. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. But because there are also I, times where I'm just kind of like, I don't want to know. Let, let me let me finish. All right, go ahead. You know, I would much rather somebody try to solve the issue, whatever it is. But if I completely close off all contact with you, it's because I am not going to be able to calmly exactly express myself in that manner. There's nothing that can be done. And if I was to open communication with you, I would say things that I would regret later. Exactly. So, you know, if, like what you said, if I happen to miss one particular account or something. Yeah, one particular contact just, outlet. Just, just don't. Just, just don't. don't just don't, because, because seriously. Because that will flip the switch and I won't be able to stop myself. Exactly. And, and then I'll feel bad later. Because exactly. Because I, I was trying to prevent this eventuality. <laughs> And it happened anyway. Exactly. And I'm tired of feeling bad for you fuckers. That I, and that I fucking. This is one of those tell all kind of videos. Seriously. No, not tell all, but tell a lot. Seriously, like we said, if we fucking get to a point. Yes, and it's a double standard. I get it. It's a double standard. And I know it doesn't sound right. It's not fair. <gasps> Whatever. But if it can, it, I'm generally pretty fucking chill when it comes to other people being, you know, being my friends. If I get along with those people, if we don't talk about politics, if we don't talk about feminism and racism, Jesus, fuck, leave me alone. And we don't fucking... Strangely enough, Glitchy and I can talk about those things. Yes, we really can. Without causing any problems. We can talk about religion and shit, too. It's fucking amazing. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> I've never, like, had I can't, I can't before. even talk about that shit with Boneyards. He's my damn boyfriend. Been my boyfriend <laughs> for damn near five years. I can't talk religion with that motherfucker. I can't talk, I can't talk feminist issues with that motherfucker. I think part of it is because I can agree to disagree and just, like, leave it at that. Whereas my love, my beloved, not so much. And, and don't get me wrong, I will talk shit about him occasionally in these videos, but... Son of a bitch! Speaking of- he knew it, he knew. This is my boyfriend's okay, well, ringtone, by the way. We're gonna end the video real quick. Love you guys, bye!